This is kind of a strange question for me because I really do not consider myself overly successful. I have a lot of things to do before I can get to that point, but I, I believe that the key to being on the right track towards success is not being afraid of failure. I know that a lot of people kind of let, let themselves be crippled by the thought of failure and will never even start something. I guess I've failed so many times that I've been conditioned that um, it almost doesn't matter if I have success or failure just so long as I'm putting forth the effort toward that goal. And once I get there, you know, success or failure is almost oddly enough, I'm happy with either one and uh, because I can have success or I can take that failure to learn from it and move on and switch things around a little bit and then go on to even more success in the future. Usually that's the, that's the way I found out that it works. So the key is to success to me is failure. For my Guess It Plate presentation, if I had to give that in one minute, I would say that uh, it's not so much about gusset plates as it is about finding the correct design models, uh, taking a complex problem and breaking that down into several simpler problems. And uh, if you think about it, that's not much further away from what we would do with a normal building design. Of course, you're going to apply your loads and then break out your beams, the columns, the bracing members, and treat those pretty well as independent members from one another once you get the loads. And it's not really this much different from what we would do with gusset plates. We're going to take this complex problem where you have a load and a gusset plate that needs to be distributed, say, to a beam and a column, and then we have different zones that we need to design by. Instead of members, we're going to break the gusset plate into separate zones, and we know how to handle those zones pretty well now. So uh, so I would say it's all about taking a complex problem, breaking it down into things that we know more about uh, using, uh, say, beam and column equations. Uh, we're just using gusset plates as uh, a way to uh, uh, convey that idea. It was the mid-90s and it was uh, the Bracing for Stability course. And uh, it may have been the first one that uh, Professor Yura and Helwig gave. It, it was just the way that they took the complicated information and made it designer friendly that I try to put into my presentations now. And uh, another thing that that did was that really the presentation information inspired me to do my master's research on lateral torsional buckling of cantilever beams. And it also uh, kind of at least led me to the references that uh, Professor Yura worked on in the mid-80s uh, on, on uh, coke beams that I actually incorporated into my research for my PhD on uh, wraparound gusset plate. So yeah, that was a highly influential seminar that I went to and um, thanks to those guys for putting on a great one. I got this drafting job. I had a drafting class and a friend got me a drafting job. That's all I knew about it at the time with uh, Valley Detailing and Jerry Robinson, who was an outstanding boss. He, after work, he would, he would uh, come in and, and teach me for about an hour after work, uh, just all about uh, trig. I didn't know trig, shamefully, uh, at that point in my life. And then eventually we got into the strength of bolts and welds and really that, uh, it was just really fascinating to me that I could, uh, and it was a change because I, I could see what I was uh, calculating versus the electrical stuff. Uh, that kind of led to me getting my undergrad, and of course I was just going to be a normal everyday designer, designing steel structures, and um, then I saw that uh, you could not only calculate the strength of these connections, but 
you could uh, actually invent new ways to calculate these. You, you could uh, do the research and come up with your own ideas on how to do this. And so I started taking the master's level courses and did the research on lateral torsional buckling. And, and then eventually, uh, and all this was at night. So I, I had a full-time job during the day, so it didn't really um, affect my day job. It's not like I had to quit and make a big decision to go back to school. So it was all kind of a hobby almost. That's how you spend 20 years on a uh, PhD, <laughs> going, the, going the long way.